All right, boys. I'm gonna be showing you guys what I'm using for this mod. Uh, the first half of this video is probably just gonna be straight to the point. Uh, and then I'll I'll save try to save my rambling for after I show all of what it is. So that way, uh, for those that don't really want to hear any of my tips or advice for PvP, that just want the build and a, a very simple breakdown of the build, uh, I will try to satisfy you guys first. So I'll go through all my pieces of gear here. All of my utility slots uh, are going to be darks, or at least they should be darks. Um, if you'll notice, I have a reinforce on uh, for a deflection. That's probably going to be your your thing here. You'll see a reoccurring theme with deflection. I'll show you all my offense. Uh, should be vicious, although I don't think that they are because I was swapping some enchantments around. I don't know where it is. Um, Valhalla. I, I get a lot of people asking me why Valhalla or uh, why not be using demo. Like A lot of people think that, you know, since I'm DPS, I would be using the demo set. And, you know, you're kind of right. It is better for DPS. However, the problem is that um, when you uh, sorry, um, when you um, are straight DPS, you're not going to be alive very long to do that DPS. So this build is kind of more focused on being able to stay in the fight. And, uh, and still be able to do pretty consistent damage. You know, buff yourself up once in a while to do a, a big heavy burst. Um, and be able to, you know, survive throughout an entire match without, you know, maybe dying or... Uh, oh, so I don't have any of these boons yet. Uh, I would assume I would be choosing power for those. Let me just double check. Yeah, power. Um, honestly, uh, I would choose here. I would choose movement speed. Because uh, the reason I, I like to build a lot of movement speed is because I'm not using Swordmaster. I don't really use Swordmaster a whole lot. I'll just run through my, my uh, boons really quick. I don't really use Swordmaster a lot. I, I prefer... Iron Vanguard for two reasons, um, or three reasons, I guess. Uh, the first reason is the daily. The daily, uh, the Iron Vanguard daily has two CCs, like hard CCs, that um, also prone the enemy afterwards, and uh, you can time it with uh, dodges. Here, let me just read real quick. Uh, what I would choose here. It would be Bloodlust, 100%. I'll go Bloodlust here. Unless you want to be a homie and, uh, Help your allies. Uh, companions don't matter. Okay, so, alright. Here's a big thing, guys. Big, 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 big thing. Uh, what really works in my favor behind the scenes all the time is this right here. The Providence Heal. Now, the Providence Heal, in case you don't know what this is comes from the swift gold lion the legendary mount i know that that sucks that part of this build sucks without the golden lion um you could really achieve this build like you don't have to have legendary gear uh, you don't have to have 14s you know getting the getting all of this is realistic this is realistic getting main of manticore it just helps it so that way if you if you adapt to my playstyle 
or the play style that this build is kind of focused around um having main is good because you know you do a heavy burst once in a while and pretty good consistent damage and that leads into the second reason why i like iron vanguard is because of threatening rush threatening rush has two components to it which would be the third uh thing that i like about iron vanguard which is the second component of threatening rush which double marks opponents so i'll actually uh while i keep going on with the build um i'll actually show you what i mean so uh let's see your main hand offhand you know you got anybody can get that the gear uh, my arms my legs and my chest piece there's probably better gear than the gear that i have on like uh i think puppets plate is better um but i'm not I'm not really worried about it. So another part of this build that's pretty important um, is definitely going to be the sieging ring. The offensive action ring is really good, really really good. Uh, it's it's it just it's a very interesting ring. I don't know. It just it really is because uh, when I when I take it off. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it, it does, it percent increased damage. Anytime you see percent increased damage, you always want to take that because you're going to have high numbers. You're already going to have, you know what I mean? Like it's just percentage increase is, is good for late game. And then, uh, obviously your, your daily, uh, is going to work with your shirt as well. Sandy's pants. These, these are, these are essential. These are I would recommend Sandy's pants for every player in the game that goes into PvP. If you PvP at all, you need to have Sandy's pants. Uh, if you don't know how to get them, I'm not 100%, like, I, I don't know the specifics, but if your guild will uh, uh, spend uh, some resource of some kind on, um, I guess, having a chance to spawn... The mysterious merchant or the wandering merchant whichever one of those two it is that will be in your guild stronghold um i guess i could go there and show you that next so first let's look at the double mark so if i was to right click this guy there is an x on him he is marked if i tab him it puts another x on him you see that Now, your threatening rush is, uh, first of all, you have no charges on them. GWFs have a charge. I was very sad when they did that a long time ago. GWFs used to be able to do this. Um, so this is consistent damage. Consistent damage. And if you go through and look at my... Uh, manage artifact powers i have this set to threatening rush it will increase the damage done by threatening rush so like you know for every 10 threatening rushes that's an extra threatening rush pretty much because it's 10 percent and you can use these very fast three four five boom boom you know what i mean and uh with the boons it will proc things like Elven uh, Furiosity, which will do extra damage. Um, it will also proc uh, Shadow Touched. Uh, I prefer the healing. So, uh, pretty much for, actually I would say a few months I've had the healing on. Um, between, you know, that, some other things like, uh, oh sorry, uh, my stable, I didn't get to my stable. Um... This is really important. Uh, cavalry's warning. This is really, really important. Uh, I mean, it, it just really is. I, I don't. I don't really personally want to break down these a whole lot. I mean, they are what they are. A lot of these are evasion. If you look at my stats, I have a decent amount of deflect. If I was to use, let's see, my normal deflect consumables 
my deflect would go up to you know 18k that's fine that's really good 18k is really good um what was the other thing uh okay gladiator's ghoul this is always working in your favor so just for reference like for future reference um like even if you're not playing gf in the future or you know whatever like if you are going to pvp and i would just recommend um you know different things to adopt into your into your play style like uh or like you know your your decision making as far as builds go because things like this is a very clear example gladiator's ghoul or guile ghoul um, you move faster when your stamina is high, and you regain stamina when it is low. You have a difference between two different things that this is going to be doing, meaning that it has a 100% uptime. So this will 100% of the time be doing something in your favor. So it's, it's better to have something always helping you rather than something that helps you once in a while. Now, you have things like, you know, um shadow clad where every once in a while it goes invisible that's good that's really good and the invisibility time around is actually really good by the way you can also use vanishing presence rings i would recommend plus four or five and then uh ring of ambush plus four or five along with uh shadow clad and you will have yourself a uh a terrifying invisible guardian fighter um, that you can just nuke people while you're invisible and there's kind of like nothing they can do about it and it's really funny because uh, you know you run in there from an ambush ring and all of a sudden you pop out of nowhere to them because they couldn't see you you have ambush ring on and then they go to hit you and then vanishing presence procs and then by the time your invisible uh, invisibility runs out from vanishing presence your shadow clad will proc and then you'll be invisible again and then by that time they're probably dead so it's really hilarious, and people get mad about it. Um, so you can do things like changing artifacts here. Now, I did not purchase the Forge Hammer Gond. I actually got it out of the Christmas event last year. Um, where's the other? There it is. So if I was to put these two on, I would have uh, 20k deflect. Um, if you don't have Lion, and you don't have Providence, uh, I mean, I would just say, you know, use whatever you have. Obviously, you know, use whatever you have. It's kind of a generic response, because there's really nothing, like, you know, if you have power, and that's all you're, you know, if you have between power and armor pen, um, it's not that one's better than the other. It's, you have to look at what you have already. So, you have to look at what you need more of. So, in, in... PvP, my armor pen. I have not been using these two artifacts. I've been using a uh, great weapon. And I think Lost Mouthhorn is better because I don't really need more combat advantage. Uh, so, my armor pen, keep in mind that I have Pioneer set on. So, in a group of 5v5 in PvP, you'll always be getting um, use out of this bonus, which is why I chose Pioneer over the uh, Primal set when this uh, set came out, is because this has 100% uptime. You get 100, I mean, uh, sorry, excuse me, 1,000 power, 1,000 defense, 1,000 uh, recovery, so power recovery is huge, 1,000 crit, when you and when you don't have a lot of crit strike, Getting a 1k crit is uh, adds a lot. And then 1k armor pen on top of that. So I'll have over 15k armor pen here. Uh, 18k deflect. Um, I've been using this pot more than this one, which is the Caprice. I've been using the watermelon. And so this is, you know, 32, 33k. Now when you use... Um, you know, your, your mount, I would highly recommend a lion or 
for really for anybody besides maybe a TR is like when they're spamming bloodbath you can get like a uh, coastal flail snail or some shit like that something cheesy but uh lion is really just it's just the in my opinion the best legendary mount for PVP the the active of it and the providence heal you both you can make very good use out of both of those um after controlling your enemy combat advantage da 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 and this one refills your stamina also, so it's it's really hilarious. Because just when somebody gets you down to 50% of your HP, you start regening a shit ton of HP back. And your stamina, like, fills up. And if you're using my build the way, like, the exact way that I have it set up, you will not have any stamina problems. I don't even realize, half the time, I don't even realize when somebody is using stamina drains on me. I'm serious. I do not realize that somebody is using stamina drains on me. I'd say probably 70% of the time. Just because my your stamina is just... It's hilarious. It really, really is. It's just very funny. So, um, yeah, Valhalla. Definitely important. Oh, let me go to the stronghold and show you where to get Sandy's pants. I just want to be thorough so that way in the future I can recommend... Um, or you could recommend this uh, video to somebody if I cover a topic that they might be curious about. So when you come into your guild stronghold, you're going to come up this pathway over here. Make your way past these goons. By the way, guys, I love this mount. I really do. Look, Check this out. Put on a laser show with this thing, dude. Alright. Um, so your merchant will be right here. It'll be this guy. If um back when every like all the guilds were doing this, I went into all of my guilds in my alliance. So Make sure you do this. Make sure you go through here and check all of these. All of them. Don't even ask them. Don't even ask them if they have it up. Just go check every single one. These can be in any guild that's in your alliance. And back when uh, everybody was doing this and making these guys appear, uh, every guild, I went through every single one and I did not find the this guy with... Um, the pants. He was here multiple times. I got, like, the guys of the Wolf Clan headpiece or whatever it was, but he did not have Sandy's pants. So, you, what you might need to do, which this is, uh, you know, something that I've, you know, people do or have done plenty of times to get this item, Sandy's pants, is you ask around for a guild that has this guy in the guild active and has Sandy's pants in it. And you just join their guild real quick, grab the pants, because it costs 20,000 guild marks. So they get a 20k, uh, you know, um, return from you, and you get the Sandy's pants, and then you join back into your old guild. Um, let's see, what else was I going to cover? Uh, oh, this is what I have chose for my ability scores. Uh, let's see. Anything else while I'm here? Um. You can change things around to fit your playstyle. Like, if you want to have a more aggressive playstyle, um, you know, really, dude, just do it. You know, like, you don't. It, it would be good if you're new to GF. Um, if you're, you know, not very, very familiar with PvP. I would kind of recommend just copying my build exactly and, you know, uh, watching one of my matches or something and trying to figure out how I play this this build and try to see if you can just... I mean, you could just go in there and hold your shield up forever. You know what I mean? Like, it looks like it, it's not a lot right now, but that's because I'm not in PvP. This is a PvP-only build. This build is ass in PvE. Um, so you just hold your shield up forever, and you move around super fast, and then every once in a while, when you when you got the balls, 
You know, you just pop off an anvil, pop off a daily anvil, whatever, whatever. Uh, so another thing, uh, another tip I want to give you guys. If you jump up and uh, go in a, f in f you know, forward, forward direction, and pop your, uh, your artifact, your wheel, while you're in, in the air, you will land in the fire buff. Watch. So, what you're going to do is... Jump up, pop it, and uh, and and uh, put your shield up immediately. So you're gonna jump up and have your shield. So right here, if I jump up, you can't see it because the anim there is no uh, shielding animation for uh, the jump. But you're actually shielding while you jump. So you can jump around and have your shield up, and people will think that you're vulnerable, but you're not. So that's uh, an animation. I don't know if it's a bug or whatever it is. It's just it's it's an animation thing. Um, by the way, I'm gonna be opening over 400 probably glorious resurgence lock boxes in the near future. I'll show you guys where I go in order to uh, to open up all my boxes. My favorite place to go. Um, let's see. If you don't have these rings, if you don't have offensive action ring, you can do the Huntsman Ward ring. This ring is amazing. If you don't have rings, if you don't have good rings to choose from, go in here. Go to... Uh, is it Epic Trials? Right here. Demogorgon. Just do a normal demo. So just go hit up all the different channels to, to join PvE and go do some end demos. Just spam the hell out of them, dude. Just every run, even if you don't have keys, just run end demos over and over and over and over and over. If you want to get the sieging ring, you have to go do the uh, the Dwarven Throne skirmish. In the skirmish here, you'll see Throne of the Dwarven Gods. If you want to get the sieging ring, it drops there. Um, if you don't have Valhalla set, I would highly recommend getting Valhalla set. If you only have the Baphomets, uh, I would, you know, obviously that's, you gotta work with what you got. Um, you don't have to copy the build exactly. If you can, I would recommend doing it. Uh, so, I guess the only other things that, uh, you know, I could cover here would be, um, make him, make your guy look, you know, sexy dude go in there like you you gotta be you gotta look the part you gotta go in there and 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 when people look at you they can see that you mean business you gotta go in there and you gotta look mean you gotta you gotta be ready and you gotta play you don't have to play aggressive but um if you want to play you know more aggressive you can just hold your shield up and walk in a diagonal like so let's say i'm walking up on this guy so like i would jump up do my into the fray, whatever, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna walk sideways. I'm gonna crab around him. I'm not pressing W. The reason I'm not pressing W is because if I press W and walk forward with my shield up, and somebody throws a lion on me, even if they're in the direction that I'm going towards, the lion will pop up behind me and uh, push me forward towards them. Uh, you, it, you know, you might have seen that happen. Probably have, and maybe you didn't notice, but. Um, you'll see it a lot in GF versus GF fights. If you, uh, or find yourself in another situation, or in a situation where you're versus another GF, never walk forward. Never, ever, ever, ever walk forward with your shield up, or at all, actually, unless you know that his line is on cooldown. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hold your shield up, and you're gonna angle just like this. This is all you gotta do. If he gets aggressive, you just... Start walking backwards, zigzag, get, you know, get ready for whatever angle he's going to try to come at you. Now be careful because if, uh, if you're like me, you're going to go for the good old jump over tactic where I jump over you and then I'm all of a sudden right behind you. So, you know, if you have your shield up, you got to be ready to, to go cut in a perpendicular direction. So if you're, you're chasing me down or I'm chasing you down like this, what you're going to do is just go uh, perpendicular like this. And then, you know, get you can get a little flash. You do a little dance. You know what I mean? Um, well, PvP popped. So, I guess I'm going to go.
put this uh, build to the test. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, if you do enjoy it, and you start smashing people up pretty good... Just make a YouTube channel. Just record it and put it up. Like, you don't even have to like. Don't even think about it. Making a YouTube channel. Just use a or download OBS. Set it up real quick. And uh, and and just record a match. Even if you don't have to upload it. Just watch it yourself. You can make it on private. But but record the matches and watch how you how you play, and 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 try to learn and evolve. Uh, I'm gonna leave before this. Uh, this match goes in. I hope you guys enjoy. I hope I covered all the uh, topics. If I didn't, just comment or whatever. I just show up at the next stream or something. <laughs> 